I am Jeremiah Ajuda Dusu, the author of Jad's Business and Financial Accounting. Welcome to class. <clears throat> Let's not uh, waste time here. It's fast, so we're still on. We're still on group uh, balance sheet. Okay, well, getting there. <laughs> okay, let's proceed. Okay, so here today, we're looking at. Uh, Now, I believe that at this level, you understand what the preference share is, okay? Uh, you know, while over the, uh, or in other classes, basically, you know, it's been a series of various subtopics under the group um, or consolidated balance sheet, right? Yeah, and then we've been talking about ordinary shares, basically. Of course, I know that you understand what ordinary shares means, right? That's more like saying, uh, uh, equity ownership in the business, right? So, but there's also another class of shares we call preference shares. So, I believe at this level, you understand what the preference share is. So, it's also a share in a company, but in this case, the shareholders are given preferential treatment. So, they rank before ordinary shareholders. So, if you're going to make uh, payments to uh, shareholder in terms of uh, uh, you know interest, okay, or let's say dividends. Preference shareholders will come before ordinary shareholders. So, preference shareholders the rank higher, or should we say, first before uh, ordinary shareholders. Okay, as a matter of fact, preference shareholders are entitled to, you know, some sort of fixed interest. Okay, they're entitled to some sort of fixed interest that is paid, you know, to them. But you know, ordinary shareholders are entitled to dividends, and that is when there's profit made. So sometimes if profit is not made, ordinary shareholders uh, don't even get anything. Okay. So where there's money to even distribute, preference shareholders, you know, uh, are even, you know, recognized before the ordinary shareholders. And then some preference shareholders have fixed interest, just like where, 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 where you have uh, fixed interest on your debentures, right? I've taught the class on debentures as well. So here, we're looking at, you know, the holding company, or let's say parent company, okay, acquiring preference what share in what subsidiary. Now, all we're saying is that the parent company has acquired ordinary shares in the what in the subsidiary. Of course, it's controlling it. But it's also possible that the parent company will also have, will also acquire, you know, part of the preference share of the what of the subsidiary. So, we want to try to understand, you know, what to do or how to treat such scenario, okay? So here, <clears throat> just like the way we consolidate, you know, ordinary shares, that's the same way we consolidate preference shares, okay? But we have to understand, you know, what uh, the acquisition is. So where the holding company has not acquired any unit of the preference share, it means that all the preference shares belong to minority interest. So where the holding company has not acquired any percentage or any unit in preference share, it means all belong to what? The minority what? Interest. But where the holding company has acquired a part of the preference share, it means that you split it between the holding company and the minority interest. So let's say the parent company 
acquires, let's say, 20% of what the preference share of what? Of the subsidiary. It means that what? In the schedule, you're going to have you know, a preference share schedule. Yeah, so let's say it is A limited in what? B limited. So that means you're going to have A limited in what? In B limited. That's what? 20%. Then the 80% will be for minority what? Interest. That is sharing the what? The preference share between the what? The holding company and the what? Minority interest. Okay? But then don't forget that uh, most preference shareholders. You know, have fixed interest, which is more like fixed income on the word investment. So, what it simply means is that undistributed profit usually belongs to the ordinary shareholders. So, it means that the reserve at the date of consolidation, okay, uh, uh, is not what apportioned, you know, uh, to sh preference shareholders. So, it still remains with the ordinary shareholders, okay. So, but the only thing we are interested in here. Is the unit that the holding company has acquired and the cost of investment in acquiring what the preference share so that is what we're going to what net of to get our what goodwill on what on our acquisition of what preference what share okay so at the end we now what dissolve the goodwill in the what preference share column so that we can have you know one uh, goodwill. So of course you're going to have to dissolve the goodwill in the preference share column and then bring it to where? The ordinary share column. So what I'm saying is this. Let's assume that A Limited acquire let's say 80% uh, ordinary share in what? B Limited. Of course that means you're going to have you know cost of control which is A in what? B. 80% right? Now if there's a preference share, let's say preference share acquired is 20% right? So we're going to have under one now for preference share. This is for ordinary what share. So for preference share, you're going to have A in B again, right? Which will now be what? 20 what? Percent. This is for preference share. Then for minority what? Interest. For the ordinary share, you're going to have 20 percent. For the what? Preference share, you're going to have what? 80 percent. You see? So you still have your connected profit and what? Loss as usual. So at the end of the day, by the time you what? Of course, to your... Um, you spread your reserve and ordinary share and preference share, you're going to have net asset acquired, right, as usual. So when you have your net asset acquired here, well, let's even put value. Let's say the one here is 100. The one here, let's say it's what, 70, for instance. So of course, you're going to have your investment. So you want to know what's the investment in the ordinary share. Let's say it's 200. So let's say this one is 100. You see? So you're going to have your goodwill. Here will be 100, here will be what, 30. So at the end, we expect, we expect that you dissolve this 30 here, okay? So there will be a transfer. The 30 will move up here, the 30 will come here, right? So that means you're going to have new here, then goodwill on consolidation will be what, 130. Okay? Of course, there's the scenario where, you know, we are expected to amortize goodwill without the next class. We're going to take, you know, amortization of goodwill, where you write off goodwill on consolidation or even over a particular period of what uh, time. Okay, so we'll look at that next class. Let's just understand what's saying here now. So here, the goodwill on consolidation board one day, which is from the preferential angle and the ordinary share one angle. So this is what we're going to take. Of course, this is dead balance goodwill. I already talked that. So this is what we take to what the consolidated board balance sheet. Of course, your you know reserve is apportioned as usual into pre and post. Okay, but of course we already know that on um, digital profit belongs to what the owners of the business which, which is which, which is the ordinary shareholders, right? So uh, that is it for you know preference share in what in a subsidiary. So summary what I've said here is that it is possible for uh, a parent company to also have investment in the preference share of the subsidiary, just like the way it has in what the ordinary share. So what I'm saying is that, you know, it's the same way, but you're going to have to create a column, okay, for preference share as well. And I said, if 
there is zero percent investment in preference share. That means all the preference share belongs to minority interest. But if there's a percentage investment in what in the preference share, say 20%, for instance, then that 20% is for the parent company, then the 80% goes to what? Minority interest. So at the end of the day, you want to know the cost of investment, you know, that has been used to acquire that 20% in the preference share. So the difference, of course, when you net off to get your good bill on what? On consideration. So that now what is transferred to what? To ordinary share column, you know, to get the net uh, goodwill on what? Consolidation. Okay? So that is just, you know, a summary of what? The treatment of what? Preference share of what? A subsidiary. So take your time, go through it. If you have questions, you can reach me on the number at the screen. I'll just reply with the right answer. So let's quickly take a question so you understand what we are talking about here. So let's quickly take this question. So we have an idea of what uh, we're talking about here. So here we have uh, the fully represented balance sheet of King's PLC and Queen's PLC at the bottom of 18. We have kings and queens, we have assets, land, building, furniture, debt of investment in queens, we have two nine dollars there, cash and bank, ordinary share capital, prevention share capital, reserve. Now, at the time we said kings acquired 90% shares in Queens Limited on 31st, 2016, when its reserve was 150,000. Kings also acquired 45% preference shares in Queens for 955,000, already included in the cost of investment in Queens. So you are required uh, to prepare the consolidation schedule and uh, consolidate the your financial position as at the first time I 18. Okay, so let's go. This is our consolidation schedule. Okay, so here. We have cost of control, so this will be for what? Ordinary what? Share, okay? So of course this is, uh, what there? Say, uh, how many percent? 90 percent? 90 percent, so we have uh, 90 percent. So let's say, uh, K in Q, 90 percent. Of course, this is the preference share, okay, which is also K in, it's also cost of control, no doubt, K in Q, how many percent there, they say is what, uh, also acquired for the 5% preference share, so this is 45%, okay, now we're going to have minority interest, so with respect of ordinary share, we have 10%, with respect to this guy, this will be 55%. Then we have consolidated profit and what? Loss. That's it. So what, what we do now, we say Queen's limit or Queen's PLC. So we have Queen's, right? So what do we have? Uh, let's say preference share. Right? So what's the preference share there? The preference share there is uh, 800. So we have 800,000. So this guy has 45%. So 45% of 800 is what? That's 360. So we have 360. This one I bought 0.55 times 800. That's 440. So if you add this together, I should give you what? 800. So we have what now? Uh, ordinary share. So what's ordinary share capital now? Ordinary share is 1,000. Ordinary share is 1,000. So 90% will be 900. 10% will be what? 100. So what's our reserve? 
Reserve is 750. So we have 750 pre posts. So they said that uh, Kings acquired 90 and Queens when reserve was 150. So this is 150. So supposed to be what? 600. So this will be times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9. This will be times 0 0.1. So 150 times 0 0.9. So 150 times 0 0.9, 135, 135, okay, so let's go to the next one, 600 times 0 0.9, 540, this is 540, then, okay? Uh, 750 times 0 0.1 75 We have uh, like that, 75 So when you add this 3 It should give us 750 So let's try 135 plus 75 Plus 540 750. So that's it. Let's go. Well, our net asset acquired. This is 5301. This is 360. For the investment. Remember, they said what? Queens acquired for the 5 cent percent shares in Queens for 955,000. Five, Already including the cost of investment in Queens. So what's the cost of the investment in Queens there? 3955. Five. So it means that the cost of investment is 3955. Five. Cost of investment in preference share is 955. Five. So you take this out, zero, 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 0003. So this is the cost of investment in what? Ordinary ones, share. So investment here is 3000. Investment here is 955. Five. What are our good news? What do we have here? 360 minus 955. This is 595. What do we get there? 595. So we have 595. So what about this? One three three five minus three thousand. One nine six five. One nine six five. So let's transfer five nine five. Five nine five. So what do we have here? This will be dash. So this is with good new on consolidation. So one nine six five plus five nine five. Two five sixty. Two five sixty. Okay. Then we have to move this here. Seven fifty times one point one. It's three post. Six hundred times zero point nine. One fifty times zero point nine. One this. So let's go. So minority interests. We want four forty plus hundred plus seventy five. Four forty plus hundred plus seventy five. Six one five. So we have King's Reserve. 
First thing to reserve there. One five hundred. One five hundred. So bring this here. Add up. So we have two zero four zero. So this is your CP and else. What we've done here basically is to prepare you know the schedule for you know uh, it's not where the parent company has investment in ordinary shares and preference shares of the subsidiary. Okay, that we've done here. So this is the preference share for the ordinary shares without minority interest with respect to the investment. Okay, so let's prepare the balance sheet now. So we say uh, kings and its what? Subsidiaries. So we say consolidated statement of financial position as at thirty first December two thousand and eighteen. So we have a uh, notes. We have the word assets. Let's call this note one. One coin. So there's our note one here. Like no coin item there. We have land and building, furniture and fittings. So land and building. So what's there? 90820. So what do we have? One seven twenty. And what's the next one? Furniture and fitting. So what do we have? Coincidentally, we have six hundred, six hundred. <laughs> six hundred plus six hundred. So that's one thousand. 200. What else? Right, let's go. 1200 plus 1720. 2970. Right? This is 2920. So we have. 2920. So let's go current. Note 2. Let's call that note 2. What do we have? We have debtors and cash at bank. So let's go. So what's the debtors there? 500, 450. That's 9. And we have bank. What's in the bank there? Five four five six eight. So let's go. Five four five four six eight. One two two five. So what do we have? Nine fifty plus one two two five. Two one seven five. So we have two one seven five. So what are good bill? Two five sixty. So let's add up. What do we have? Two nine twenty plus two one seven five plus. Two five sixty seven six five five. So our liabilities here. So our reserve. Reserve is two zero four zero. Ordinary share. 
for the nine share of the parent company. Three million. That's three thousand. What's the preference share of the parent company? Two million. That's two thousand. Now we have minority interest. What do we have? Six one five. Okay, let's add up two zero four zero. Plus three thousand plus two thousand plus six one five seven six five five. So this is your total assets, your total liabilities. Okay. So this is uh, the consolidated balance sheet okay for you know a parent company that has investment in ordinary shares and preference shares okay so you can take your time go through it if you have questions you can reach me on the number as displayed don't forget you can support us by printing account number as displayed or sponsor copies of my textbook for free distribution students thank you see you next class bye